All right, let's talk turkey. TJ Friedel, gonna miss a month starting center fielder for the Cincinnati Reds. What does this mean for the Reds going into opening day? Yeah, this is probably the one that hurts the most uh, just because the Reds don't have the depth in center field. I don't think offensively the Reds are going to take that big of a hit. Uh, I think if they're playing Benson and, and Fairchild, they're platooning them or some sort of, of, of combination like that. They're not going to miss a whole lot offensively, but defensively, it's a huge loss. Uh, TJ Friedel was in a well above average defender in center field. And the Reds as a whole were a really, really bad defensive team last year. And that's kind of been mm -hmm. one of their, their big issues the last several years. Something I've definitely uh, uh, you know, mentioned a lot as, I think, uh, a silent killer for the Reds. So you were, But you were kind of banking on this year. You had up the middle, you had Ellie and McLean, and then you had Friedel in center field. You kind of hoped that you could fill the rest of the pieces around it and be okay enough to get by. But when you're missing, missing T.J. Friedel and his defense in center field, it's going to be tough. Now, I did say on the podcast this morning, uh, if you want to be really optimistic, the Reds, like, first eight series, I think six of them are – six or five or six of them are at home, um, and one of them's in Philadelphia, which is in a big ballpark. So it, maybe you can kind of get by with it. It might be a somewhat of a decent time, you know, to get by defensively, but it's a, it's a huge loss for the Reds. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's not the only loss that they've had recently. While you guys were on the trip, obviously the news broke out about Noelve Marte. So this means that two guys that you kind of penciled in as not, maybe not everyday starters, but but the majority of the time, but for all intents and purposes, you know, guys that you expected to be a part of this success this season, they're not going to be here to start the year. Uh, Noelve uh, and Friedel, how does the team kind of navigate these waters? Because they did a nice job at adding, I, I feel like having enough talent went around there. How do they navigate these waters going forward, missing not one, but two would-be starters? In Noeli Marte, the injury, I think, it definitely takes the Reds' ceiling down. I, I think the Reds are built more to withstand a Noeli Marte suspension mm -hmm. than the Friedel injury. Uh, you know, Jimmer Candelaro has had a really brutal spring. I think he's hitting 080. He's like two for 25, but you're, again, you're how much do you put, uh, yeah, how, how much stock do you put into, uh, uh, into the spring training numbers? I don't know, but you, you, I think you slide him at center, at third base and you're, you might not be losing that much. In fact, you know, there was a chance Noemi Marte would kind of have a sophomore slump. He kind of performed really well at the end of last year. So I think that one's not necessarily as big of a loss as, as Friedel. I think you can get by with that. Uh, the, the starting pitching, I'm not as concerned about that. I, I don't think Nick Lodolo is going to be out very long. I actually did get to see him pitch on Saturday. Looked really sharp up until the last two batters that he faced, he walked. So I think maybe there was a little bit of fatigue there. So it might take him a little bit of time to build back up. But early on, he looked he looked as good as he's ever looked. So I, I do think the Reds are, are, are okay pitching-wise. Um, I, I know I saw that tweet you put up. Uh, Sam Mole is actually scheduled to pitch today. That's good. So, and they're say, they're saying that he's going to be ready for opening day. Uh, Nick Martinez threw a game, simulated game or backfield game or something yesterday, and was fine. They say that he should be okay. Uh, I don't know about his misplaced ribs. I don't know how that works, but uh, they're saying that those guys are okay as of now. Yeah, and with with a team that under the David Bell administration has it started well, right? I think that's I think that's more than fair to say that. You know, throughout David yeah. Bell's tenure, April hasn't been very kind to the Reds. And in a division that's, you know, there's a lot of competition in the National League that, oh, yeah, the Reds missed by two games last year, so every game does matter. Should fans be worried about these, you know, these injuries and these losses that are going to kind of plague the, the Reds to begin the year? Well, yeah, I mean, the Reds, it's pretty important they get off to a good start because they do have um... – uh, obviously, they started the season with the Nationals. They got the White Sox. They have the Angels all coming up. But then once you kind of get past those first several series, you're going to face teams that were, you're expecting to be contender after contender for, like, I think almost like a six-week stretch. So oh, wow. I, think it's the fir I think it's the first 20 or 22 games. Uh, that's the games that the Reds need to, I think, at least be 500. I don't think the Reds need to go, you know, on some crazy, like, you know, you, you have to start 12-8 and eight or you're screwed. I mean, I think you play close to 500. You can you can survive, but if you start you know seven and thirteen or something like that, you could really find yourself digging a hole uh, early this season. So the schedule it, it's it's favorable for the Reds early, 
Uh, but uh, they're they're going to have to capitalize on that. Yeah, uh, as as we keep talking about all the things with Cincinnati Reds, I brought up this take last week, and I got buried. They told me I was just the biggest dummy that's ever dummied. Um, I think that with, with Noel Ve Marte, you know, we talked about TJ Friedel, we, and, and we're going to get into the suspension here now. He misses the first half of the year because of the suspension. Can't play in the postseason. Do you anticipate that the Reds will play Noel Ve Marte? Because I know that's, like, it makes sense to play him if it makes the team better, but if he's not going to be a part of postseason plans, kind of what's the point? Do you anticipate that Noel Ve Marte will play when he comes back from his suspension? Just depends on how everyone else is doing. I mean, if, if, if Jamer Candelario's having a great year and Ellie and McLean are healthy, then he might have a hard time, uh, you know, getting playing time. I, I don't think the Reds are going to let leave him down in AAA. There's not really any benefit because the Reds are already going to gain an extra year of service time because of how long he's going to be out. Um, and then he, with him coming up last year, like you're not going to gain an extra year of service time by keeping him down. So there's really no no point uh, unless you just want to punish the kid, which I don't see why you'd really want to do that. Sure. Um, so I, I it it's really I think it might be a cheap answer, but it's really just gonna I think pay, depend on how everyone else is playing around him. Um, I think he will be on the team, but is he playing every day? It just depends on if they're desperate enough to 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 need him or not. Yeah, that'll be an interesting development in, in July just based off where the Reds are, based on how people are playing, and you kind of get back. It, it almost feels like a, a midseason acquisition where you're getting like, hey, we're going to get this young guy in. That's going to be great, and that's a, that's a spin that you can look at it differently. That's going to be interesting to say.